Hey folks, the Horror Nerd Touched Rooch here again at the New Jersey Horror Con and Film Festival. I'm sitting here with one of the stars of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Mr. John Dugan. John, how are you today? Fine, how you doing, man? I am doing great. I'm having a blast at the convention. How about yourself? Oh, I've had a ball. Yeah, I got in on, uh, I got in really early. I left uh, Nashville early uh, Thursday morning, so I had like all day to stay here before we started yesterday so good for you so you weren't traveling in that lovely weather we had here in new jersey i came in before you know it did which is fortunate really yeah so yeah i've had a ball that's great so uh john you were played grandpa sawyer in the original texas chainsaw massacre does it ever surprise you after all these years the passion that we horror fans still have for this movie uh I'm not surprised anymore, really. I, you know, when I first started doing this, I was shocked. I didn't realize, that, you know, how how many rabid fans there were. But uh, you know, I, I've probably seen the film since I got back, is since I started making personal appearances like 11 years ago or 12 years ago or something. I've probably seen the film at least once a year, every year, because of an event or something. And uh, it really holds up. It's a good film. So I can see, I can see the fandom, you know. And, and then we were named by the American Film Institute as one of the best 100 American films of all time. You know, uh, not American horror films, American films, one of the top 100 films of all time by the AFI, which is a you know, huge honor. And, uh, and I think we deserved it. It was well done, you know. Yeah. It's well directed. It's well written. It's, uh, the, the cinematography is beautiful. It's well acted. It's just... People I've shown it to who, who are not like true hardcore horror fans are always surprised by it because, you know, given the title, and then they expect a lot more blood and gore. And I'm like, well, that's kind of the whole point. <laughs> yeah, there's very little uh, blood in, in the... We used very little blood in the film, but people think they saw it mm -hmm. because the way the film's done, you know. But it's, that's just your own mind finishing the image that we... We suggested an image, and you know, it's your own brain over the years thinks, yeah, you see that guy cut in half and the guts come out. You, you never see that. You know, it's not there. I've won bets. I've won bets about Terry's scene hanging on the meat hook. People say, would you see that hook go under? You, no, you don't see the hook go under. You see her react to the hook going under, but you don't see the hook. So it's, uh, you know, it kind of set the pace for a lot of stuff to film. Sure, and you know I'm a lifelong horror fan, so I've seen kind of the evolution where today there's such an an emphasis on showing all the gru and the blood and the gore, and I and I guess there's a place for that, yeah, but I much prefer the um, imagination more so. Uh huh. It's it's uh. I don't know. I don't know what how to describe Chainsaw to somebody who hasn't seen it. Though <laughs> it's a horror film, but uh, it's a, a suspense. I don't know. A, it's not a slasher because not a lot of slashing, even though it's a chainsaw in it. But uh, it's one of those things where up, up until Chainsaw, most scary films had been, you know, horror films have been about monsters. And with the exception of Psycho, uh, that's all, you know, that's all we had then. So this, you know, this was about the monster next door who was a human, you know. A deranged family of human beings that you could you know, could live down the road from you. I, I think that's one of the the gut frightening things about it is that they're humans, kind of. <laughs> humans are always the worst monsters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I I think that's part of the effect of it too. That people think, geez, that could happen to me. Exactly. Um, now the the famous dinner scene. Yes. What was that like to film? But awful. It was ter <laughs> terrible. It was very long and uncomfortable. Very long and uncomfortable shoot. Uh, that that was my last day there. And I'd been in makeup in the chair for five hours before I had to start work. And then we worked for like 26 or something. So it was a long, long day and very, very hot. We had no ventilation because the windows were all blacked out because we were shooting around the clock. So. You, you seal off the windows, cover them with black cloth, and then put up 10,000 watts of tungsten, you know, studio lighting, and um, those things are hot, <laughs> you know, so it had to be well over 100 degrees in the, in the room, and uh, 
and I got five pounds of like liquid latex makeup glued to my head and, and a wool suit. <laughs> so it was it was rough. And uh, the way that Toby shot is he every time we did like a close up or two shot, we had to run through the entire scene again. Yeah, really <laughs> weird way to do things, but uh, <laughs> and now in retrospect, I was watching that film a few years ago in a, in, a, uh, in a theater in Nashville, Tennessee, with a full audience, and I did a little intro and everything. Dawned on me that maybe, and I was watching that scene that maybe, maybe he did all that. He drug it out so long on purpose until we were all ready to just wring each other's throats. Everybody was so exhausted. And the tension, you can feel it. It's just in that scene, it's just palpable, you know. And Gunner once said, yeah, there comes a point where you think, yeah, let's just, fuck it, let's kill her. Let's kill her, I want to go home. Can, can we just kill her now and go home, you know. And uh, it worked. Whatever he did worked, because that's a hell of a scene, you know. It, it does come across the terror uh, in Marilyn's eyes. Like, it seems real. So I, I get that. I, you can see that it was uncomfortable. God, what a trooper. What a trooper. If that had been a union film, it would have never happened. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. But what we put her through, what she went through herself, you know, what she put herself through. Uh, she was a, what a babe. She was just a, a hell of an actress and a, you know, fearless. She was a fearless actress. You know, to, to she did what had to be done. You know, and uh, I have a lot of respect for her. I miss her. Yeah, she was she was great. I was fortunate enough to meet her a couple of times over the years. Just a really nice lady. Yeah. So, um, did you see the Texas Chainsaw remake when it came out? No, I've never seen it. Good for you. <laughs> I'm in. Uh, I'm in the uh, fourth one, and then I'm in the sixth one which was Chainsaw 3D, which I played Grandpa again, 38 years later. <laughs> and that is silicone makeup, which is way more comfortable than that latex shit, let me tell you. It's not comfortable to be in all day. It, sure. And we were shooting in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana in August. I come out of my trailer. It was 103 degrees at 10 o'clock in the morning. And I was like, what is with you people? You never heard of, like, November or, you know, what the hell? Almost 40 years later, I'm in the same miserable position that I was. <laughs> did, you, uh, you, did you ever have any idea that after so much time you'd be playing the same character again? No, no, no. Uh, uh, it was kind of a rush. It was really surrealistic. They made me stay in my trailer because it was so hot and that stuff is so delicate that it would melt. But... Um, so I ended up having to just run out to the food uh, food tent, get my lunch, and then get back in my in my trailer where it's air conditioned and eat by myself. So I was sitting at the makeup table, the only place to sit and eat, and with a mirror there. And this makeup was so realistic that it looked like my father did shortly before he died, because I look a lot like my old man. You know, my mom used to have our high school graduation pictures in a double frame. It's hard to tell which is which. But, um, so it was like I was having dinner with my dead father. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It was pretty. That's not creepy at all. Uh, yeah. Uh, it was kind of creepy, wow. come to think of it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a very interesting tidbit. <laughs> uh, no, to do it again, uh, it was a rush. It was wonderful. Very cool. And it was, uh, they had money, <laughs> right? They had paid very well and on time, which uh, in this business is, you know, <laughs> that's good. Absolutely. So, John, tell uh, before we wrap up, um, why don't you tell everybody how, um, uh, where they can follow you along to see what you're up to and, and keep up with the uh, with the movies? Well, you can just find me on Facebook. I'm on there every day fucking around, so. <laughs> okay, cool. Me too. Just swore. I'm a social media whore. Okay. I am too. Nice. I, I got the internet's the best thing ever happened to me because I've always, I've always been a, an information junkie. You know, constantly reaching for an encyclopedia or a dictionary or something. So to have all the information, you know, just in the world at your fingertips, 
almost instantaneous to me is just so I can as my wife calls it going down the rabbit hole just going from link to link to link to link to link the the YouTube yeah. trap the black hole <laughs> so uh, yeah you can find me on Facebook and uh, I have a couple of films in the can that should be released this year one is uh, Deviant Behavior where I play a, a, a burnout kind of no well, not burnout <laughs> But like a, a kind of grizzled, uh, older, uh, a uh, homicide detective chasing a psycho serial killer. And uh, then uh, Rock, Paper, Dead, which uh, directed by Tom Holland. Rock, Paper, Dead. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> directed by Tom Holland and written by Victor Brook Miller and uh, uh, Carrie Fleming. Uh, Victor Brook Miller wrote the original um, Friday the 13th. And uh, and it's got let's see Mike Madsen, me, <laughs> uh, Maureen McCormick is in it. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she plays like one of the victims' moms or something. Oh, that's I, awesome. I didn't, I, she was not there the day any of the days that I was working, so I didn't get to meet her. But I thought that was kind of cool. You know? That is very cool. Because I used to be told I looked like an old short Greg Brady uh, years ago. <laughs> right, fair enough. I'll buy that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so it's almost like, you know, she was my sister or something, and I didn't get to meet her. Um, and I play uh, Uncle Charles, who's a, an abusive, pedophile uncle of the main character who's a psycho serial killer. I'm pretty much the reason that this guy became a psycho serial killer. You know? Great. <laughs> so Tom let me cut loose and just go, no, I, I just had, it was hard, and it was, I was very nervous about it but it uh i've i've seen it i saw it at a film festival a couple months ago and uh, i like what i did and i like the film a lot so it should be out sometime this year very very cool well thank you so much for taking a few minutes to spend with us have a great rest of the weekend at the convention and i wish you much success in all your future projects thank you hey thanks a lot everybody and we will see you at the next interview